Turning towards topic number two, the symptoms which a number of you have likely experienced or some family members have. Want to get first out of the way the medically non-important issues such as spider veins. These are medically irrelevant. Um, you see them here. Um, they may be unsightly. They can be treated with injections by vein clinics, but medically they do not play any role. They do not predispose to DVT or PE, and we tend to ignore them. Now, varicose veins often are also clinically not that relevant in the sense that most people with varicose veins do not develop DVT or PE, the more dangerous clots. Now, varicose veins, you can see here, is this um, sausage-like or worm-like appearance of veins which have widened due to structural abnormalities. And here on the right, you see an abnormal varicose vein. And what can happen is that clots form in these widened uh, varicose veins. And these would be superficial clots there underneath the skin. And those superficial clots are typically also not dangerous, even though it can be quite painful. And we'll get to that in a second. Varicose veins can be removed by vascular clinics, vascular surgeons, but the majority of people with varicose veins will not develop DVT or PE. Now, the superficial thrombophlebitis or superficial clots are clots in veins that are relatively close to the surface of the skin. And here you see the leg, um, you see the deep vein, but you also see a superficial clot called, called lesser saphenous and greater saphenous vein. And on the right-hand side, you see if a vein becomes inflamed and clotted, this can be quite painful, but it's very local. It's not the whole leg. It's just in the area where the clot is. So this localized tenderness and pain, the redness, the warmth, and a palpable cord argue for the superficial thrombophlebitis. Again, overall, not that dangerous. But if a superficial clot is close to the deep venous system, as you see in the middle, then the superficial clot can expand and become a DVT, and then um, things get more serious. Here you see a patient with a superficial thrombophlebitis in the thigh. It's in a focal area of redness and tenderness and pain. Therapy for these. Often, no therapy is needed, um, and within 10 days or two weeks, the symptoms classically go away by themselves. Non-steroidals can be help helpful, such as ibuprofen and Motrin, as anti-inflammatory drugs and pain medication. Heat and cold application, if the patient finds it beneficial, could be used. And occasionally, we use short-term uh, blood thinners, such as low molecular weight heparin, the Lovenox kind of drugs, or Rixtra. Um, Warfarin is classically not used for these two, four, or maybe six-week uh, long treatments. And then we come to the real serious disease, and that's a DVT. And obviously here uh, we see a patient with a massive left leg DVT. Uh, the leg is swollen, it's warm, it's slightly reddish, uh, discolored. Uh, it's very painful, and it's a diffuse painfulness. It's not the focal area that we saw in the superficial clot. But this is uh, difficult to miss as a diagnosis. Um, so, the teaching point is that the symptoms in DVT are classically diffuse and not localized, and typically we cannot feel a cord because the deep veins are deep inside the leg in the muscles uh, so that the clot cannot be felt. This is a patient with a right leg DVT. Again, you see that the right leg is swollen. It's reddish discolored. Um, in the middle image, uh, I have put the fingers on the leg leg on the thigh, and you see the indentation because the leg is swollen. This is a classical quite significant DVT. And here you see a patient with a DVT on the left side. The patient has pain, is not putting full weight onto the left leg. The leg is swollen. Again, that's uh, fairly uh, cl classical and difficult to miss. But the symptoms can be quite subtle. Uh, sometimes patients only have some pain uh, in the calf. They have no swelling. And that's typically when uh, diagnosis get missed or delayed. Um, so an important part is that the patient, him or herself, knows what his or her risk factors are for DVT and PE, so that if unusual leg symptoms occur, pain, swelling, warmth, redness, or only one of them, the person thinks about DVT, or in the case of chest symptoms, PE. So the pulmonary embolism, a clot in the lung, classically comes from the leg. And you see here, right leg DVT, 
The clot travels as an embolus through the heart chamber to the lung, gets lodged in the lung, and causes a PE. And there may be multiple PEs as the clot breaks up while it travels upstream. The classical symptoms are chest pain, when classically when one takes a deep breath in, shortness of breath, cough, or an unexplained fast heart rate. However, symptoms again may be quite subtle, and maybe there's only chest pain or only mild shortness of breath. Um, so it can be the whole spectrum of massive symptoms or barely any symptoms. So the key points maybe about symptoms for uh, family members, patients, the general public certainly are to know the four symptoms of DVT and those of PE that we just discussed. Um, and if you have had a DVT or PE, to make other family members aware, uh, friends aware, uh, certainly family members uh, are at increased risk for DVT, PE if you've had a clot and that's referring to typically parents, siblings, and children, the so-called first-degree relatives. And while their risk may not be very high, it is still somewhat increased. We've discussed that symptoms can be subtle or can be pronounced. Symptoms can happen very suddenly, acutely, over 24 hours uh, out of good health, or they can have a slow onset over days, weeks, and sometimes months, and slowly creep up so that it's more difficult to really recognize what is going on. If we were to look at every patient with DVT and did a lung scan, about 50% of patients with DVT also have PEs that can be small and asymptomatic. And unless one looked with an imaging study, one would not know there is a PE. But it's very frequent that smaller clots break off from a DVT. And then vice versa, many patients with PE also have a DVT. And that can be in the leg or if a leg double ultrasound is negative, one could uh, postulate that the clot came from the pelvis or maybe uh, from the abdomen. 